Now, as we get into different types of front end suspensions, most all of them are going to rely on at least one ball joint. So one of these guys for swiveling the wheel as well as moving the, uh, the suspension up and down. That's the job of a ball joint. It's going to be one at the bottom on pretty much every car out there, and that's going to be on a control arm, sometimes called an A arm because they look like a capital letter A. Here's one on the bench uh, with a spot for a ball joint to go into. This is an older vehicle with a big cast iron huge A arm and a very similar size one for the top. So a upper and lower control arm of the similar size or A arms both moving back and forth like this thanks to courtesy of the spring and sandwiched between the two would be the steering knuckle so the vehicle's wheel and uh, caliper and brake assembly, rotor assembly can do this as you steer down the road with a tire and wheel on there. Now at the heart of it and a lot of these you're seeing here on this bench are Delphi steering suspension components or our steering suspension line, the ball joint. So in the center of the illustration there you see a ball joint. Not a lot has changed in those in years and years. It is going to give you the ability to do the steering knuckle movement this way and also keep a good contact between that steering knuckle or suspension member and the control arms. If the control arms are not identical in size, if you have a shorter one on the top, a bigger one on the bottom, we'll call that a short long arm. Very, very common. The double wishbone you see on the right, very similar. Then we have what's called multi-link suspension systems where we have components that don't look like necessarily a, uh, a classic control arm shaped like the letter, capital letter A. So multiple links like this, sometimes there's several links. The more links, typically the more expense you'll see in more luxury cars, but better contact with the road. Job two and job one, better isolation of the road bumps from your, your occupants of the vehicle. So as we move on into our front suspension types, if we have a coil spring or a, a torsion bar, we'll have an upper and lower control arm. If the upper control arm has been removed, it'll be part of our McPherson strut assembly. So been around for many decades, in smaller vehicle applications because you can get more stuff in a smaller given area. So we have a coil spring for those uh, isolation of the bumps from the, the vehicle's passenger compartment. And then we have the dampers, more on dampers later. This is a damper called a McPherson strut. It could be a damper called a shock absorber, either air and hydraulic or strictly hydraulic, but dampers change the oscillations or reduce oscillations of the spring. But the bottom line here is we only have one ball joint and that's on the bottom control, the lower control arm. The upper control arm now is the bottom of the McPherson strut. The top of the McPherson strut above the spring with a little bracket that uh, is uh, bolted on and keeps the spring compressed, that's going to go into the strut well of the vehicle and that's going to be a load bearing surface. So a load bearing surface up in the body of the vehicle above the spring of the McPherson strut spring assembly and then the bottom of the McPherson strut that's going to be the other load bearing device.